Yo, 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 yo. What it is, what it be. Hmm, the chat should be appearing there. Why not? Paste. Boom. There you go. Hey there. Hi there, motherfuckers. What's going down? Can't gain subs when all the people are getting shown the video subs. Actually, my videos are getting subscribers. The problem is that I'm losing old right wing, I presume mostly subscribers, uh, faster than I'm gaining new subscribers. But eventually, everybody who hates me but realizes, oh fuck, I'm still subscribed to this asshole, goes away. And then, it's all up from there. Who cares? I don't really give a shit. As long as people are listening to me, I don't give a fuck. Even if it's just like three people, like TJ, woo! <laughs> Somebody like, yeah. Yeah. No sound. There's sound. Shut up. I see their sound. Don't even try to fuck with me, bitch. I literally see it. I literally see it, motherfucker. Money. Oh my god, the only thing I love. Money! TJ, why don't you pay Scotty? You lost, dude. I didn't fucking lose shit. How dare you? You pay him. You're so rich. What editing software I use? I usually don't really do too much editing these days, but when I do, it's with Premiere Plus. You know, that's what I do. I use Premiere Plus when I do edit, but I hate editing. So I try to always just do shit in one take. And unless there's an egregious problem or there's some really strong need to edit something, I'll avoid it. Yeah, like stuck in robot voice. Well, there was no, I couldn't fix that in, in post, I don't think. I don't think there's a de-robotifier. Maybe there is. I'm not going to sit there and fuck with it. Especially when I need to have a video out before midnight. Because I put that out at like 11.50 or something. I'm like, oh, well, it is what it is at this point. Like, I don't like it. I like it. <laughs> Dividing the audience. Like, eh. whatever. Here is some money. Thank you. Scotty as tall as you know. Scotty's six inches shorter than me. He's like six foot even. Trump is literal evil. The sanctity of this place has been fouled. Anyone else here in incredible pain? I mean, you're on Earth, so yeah, you should be. Anybody who's not in incredible pain is having issues. Dems are pushing Biden for 2024. It doesn't seem like a good plan for the Dems. I feel like every report that I've ever heard has said the contrary, that like there's immense pressure for Biden to step aside and let some new part, new person take the reins of the party. But who would that be? There's like not really much of a... I mean, usually, I mean, you would think like, oh, well, the vice president, but like <laughs> you're better off going with Biden than her. I wasn't uh, a fan of the robot voice. So I got over. It. Yeah, I feel like I feel like uh, someone someone in the comments said they went through the five stages of grief with it, and I feel like that. I think a lot of people did who gave it a chance. A lot of people were just like, I ain't listening to this fucking robot shit. But the people who stuck with me, the people who stuck it stuck it out, kind of like came to appreciate the robot voice. It's like, oh, I can't take it. Uh, well, it's just not so bad. I don't know. I don't know all five stages. So I just went from one to the acceptance <laughs> hi mr naughty priest thanks for the 50 dollars. very nice of you very nice of you i do have some topics i have to go at 6 45 ish or so because i have to uh go uh, go to the gym gotta work out gotta get fuscular save me please from canada no you get what you deserve Yeah, I keep waiting for uh, for muscles to actually like show up on my body. I keep getting stronger every week. I fucking get stronger, but I don't see any fucking muscle. It's like, eh. I guess I do see some, but it's like buried under all that jiggly ass fat. Urgh. Lame. Am I trashing Sargon today? 
Well, he's in the thumbnail, ain't he? He's in the... He's in the fucking title, ain't he? I don't know if I'm trashing him, but he said some. I saw... I went to his channel, and I saw a video, and the title intrigued me. We'll get to it. He said something in the video. I was just like, that's wrong, man. That's just not even... <laughs> That's just not even correct. I don't mean it's wrong, like morally wrong. Whatever about that. But like, it's it's just wrong. I mean, it's just factually wrong. I mean, it's not factual because it is a matter of subjectivity, but like, it's really kind of a stupid opinion. Thanks for writing hey to me on Twitter. You're welcome. I don't remember writing hey to you, but yes. Hey. Hey, good sir. Hey. Fed muscles your whole life. Dude, you know what the fuck I'm talking about, all right? Don't give me this, like, technicality bullshit. Okay? Fussels. When is Sargon right, lol? I mean, he's just presumably right about some shit. I don't know. To be honest with you, I never really watched too much Sargon of Akkad, even, like, you know, when we were both anti-SJWs. Anti I'm not, like, a big YouTube watcher for the most part. Like most people on YouTube, I've, you know, that are even like in my periphery, in my supposed circle, like I've maybe seen like two or three of their videos typically. Cause I'm just like not really super into it. But, uh, you know, that's just like my own personal bullshit, right? I'm just like too egotistical to allow someone else to talk at me that much. You know, <laughs> it's like, I don't care. I'm, I'm gonna talk. You fucking listen. Average atheist, lol. Yeah. That's true. Average atheist. Super intelligent. Gigantic fucking brain. Gigantic muscles buried under gigantic fat. Strong as an ox. Tougher than nails. Yeah, that's, that's me. Eat less, loser. You'll be ripped. Dude, I love eating so much, though. I love it. I <laughs> just love it. And you know, I have such a high calorie intake per day. Like, because of my like sheer size, it's like, you, dude, you can eat 2,800 calories a day. Easy. Days you work out, you can probably eat even more. My watch tells me I burn like 3,400 calories on an average day, which is pretty much consistent with what my BMR says. When I put it in on sites and stuff, it's like, okay, cool, yeah. But even then, I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> just like a consumption machine. I really shouldn't eat these brownies. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I really shouldn't eat them brownies, but now I'll be good. Ooh, ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Quitting smoking, way easier than quitting uh, junk food. Gotta say that. Uh, thanks, Chilled Bones, and thanks, Wesley Fisher. Gluttonous. Oh my God, yeah. I have, I am, I am gluttony personified. So I got the one that started classical liberal. You know, I think he is. I don't know if he started it, but he is the face that comes to mind when someone says classical liberal. I'm a classical liberal. The fuck does that mean? It means I'm a conservative that doesn't want to use that word. <laughs> okay, cool. And then Tim Pool took it to, I'm a disaffected liberal. Okay. <laughs> a lot of liberals running around that are very Republican. Very strange. Weird phenomena of 2022. Of course, their version of events is that, like, the Democratic Party has moved so far left. Has it? <laughs> like... How? I mean, I haven't heard anyone. I haven't heard anyone like a mainstream like t ticket be like abolish private property, destroy the commodity form, workers own the means of production. I haven't heard any of that shit. You know, I've heard like the strong, the farthest left they get is like mixed economy, social democracy bullshit, which is like whatever. <laughs> Like you, that's just like nice, nicey, nice capitalism. Capitalism with a smile. 
So that's like as far left as we go in this country. And that part of the party is not even the part of the party that's in charge. That's about as far as the Democratic Party goes, and that's not even the wing that rules the party. Like I saw a news story that was like, China's threatening to shoot down Nancy Pelosi. And I was like, yeah, I gotta go with China on this. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you go China. <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe they ain't all bad. You know what I mean? Like how, like would America really, we'd all have to pretend to care if that happened, right? Like if, if China shot down Nancy Pelosi's plane, we'd all have to be like, oh no. No. Like we'd all have to pretend to give a shit. Republicans would have to give a shit. That'd be the thing that would give me comfort as I predict, well, you know, we still have to treat this as a serious, you know, attack on America, blah, 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 blah. But watching the Republicans have to pretend to mourn Nancy Pelosi, not Republican politicians, because they're in tight with her. I don't believe, I don't believe that she actually has any enemies, uh, you know, in the halls of power. But like Republican, you know, just everyday Republican people, you know, I never did agree with her, but you know, <laughs> she was an American and uh... <laughs> there's nothing um, in the world funnier than, to me than Dave Rubin slowly realizing the right won't accept him. Dude, what does Dave Rubin give a shit? He's just, he's a useful mouthpiece. Yeah, you know what? Right now, he's like kind of in the outs, but the second that they need to pretend to give a shit about gay people again, they'll trot him right back out. Be like, oh, look at Dave Rubin. We love Dave. Dave Rubin's gay. We love Dave Rubin. We're not bigots. See, Dave Rubin. You know? But right now, they're more of like, they're more about mask off, like, fuck these fucking queers. So Dave Rubin's not super useful right now. You know? <laughs> But the second that they need to pretend to give a shit about gay people again, bam, Dave Rubin, center stage. You watch. Um, thanks, Louis Morillo. You're nice. There's nothing. Oh, yeah, we already read that one. Who's this? Uh, Gage Paragon, $5. Want to do one of those AI-generated art videos? All you got to do is giggle at your creations. Fun for the whole family, bruv. Yeah, maybe I will do that. Last time, I, I don't know. Every time I've done it, I've gotten disappointing results. Those AIs, they they still lack the imagination to keep up with me, man. Because I've asked them for a number of things, and they never fucking deliver. Hi, TJ. Is there a particular individual you still talk to or are pretty much done with him? I don't have any... I don't know any individuals these days. I don't get myself in those kind of situations no more. You know what I mean? Whoa, you got the titty one. There's only one titty one. Dave is a disposable toady. Well, yeah. But that's why, I mean, he's useful. They'll keep him in their back pocket the whole time. They ain't ever going to fucking get rid of him. Remember the creepy eyeball you used months ago, TJ? The creepy eyeball? The creepy eyeball. Oh, yeah, yeah. The gif. I don't remember what you're talking about. That's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah. Stop asking for porn with the AI. Your dreams are centuries away. Dude, I'm not even... I didn't even expect that of it yet, okay? I know that's not yet. But all I asked for was, I'm like, show me Tucker Carlson getting ripped apart by wolves. And it didn't. it did not deliver. It showed me pictures of wolves, and it showed me pictures of Tucker Carlson. And I'm like... Did you not read the part where I said ripped apart? Do you not know what ripped apart means yet, AI? <laughs> ripped apart. Eviscerated. Gutted. I tried every fucking variation. Nothing. Just show me pictures of Tucker Carlson and wolves. It's like where? Oh, it was Ben Shapiro, actually. It wasn't Tucker Carlson. But whatever. Boo. Hey, CJ. Are the lost Vimeo DFF videos ever going to be uploaded somewhere? We have yet to find a adequate place to do that. If you know of a good video host, because we've honestly been thinking about maybe just putting them up on like mega upload or something at this point, like just put them in like a Dropbox somewhere or something like that and just let people download them because we have not, we've not found like a reliable video host. that's not going to be copyright intensive. 
Carl's whining about black hobbits on Loda's Eaters. Yeah, I didn't pull anything from Lotus Eaters or whatever. I knew he had another show. I was kept, I, he has like 50 million channels. I'm like trying to find the fucking channel. That I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna, no, he doesn't barely use that. It's the the thinkery I remember was a thing, I went there. Then I saw Sargon just live stream. Then I got Sar Sargon daily, this, that. Um, Am I here? Yes, you're here. You're very here. Look how here you are. You're super here. But yeah, I don't know. He's got a lot of channels. Lots of them. Mm. Well, we better get to some of this uh, actual content before uh, before my time runs out and I have to go to the, the gaim. Oh, a gaim. Fox News, once home to Trump now often ignores him. So when I first read this, I was like, eh, bullshit. This is just the mainstream, the lame stream media trying to shit on my boy Donald Trump, right? Trying to do their little divide and conquer strategy, trying to tear us good freedom loving patriots apart. You know what I mean? Uh, but uh, then I read this part. I was like, this part really kind of like highlights, I think, the crux of shit. Raiha. This is the ultimate, I think. This says, um, on July 22nd, as Mr. Trump was rallying supporters in Arizona and teasing the possibility of running for president in 2024, saying... We may have to do it again. Fox News chose not to show the event, the same approach it has taken with nearly all of his rallies this year. Instead, the network aired Laura Ingram's interview with a possible rival for the 2024 Republican nomination, Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida. It's like, man, so Trump's out there. He's on the campaign trail. He's lighting a fire under his base's ass. He's out there trying to fucking, you know, do MAGA 2024 and Fox News who used to worship the ground he walks on is like nah let's let's uh let's air a DeSantis interview instead it's pretty obvious to me that you know the Republican uh, party I mean like we, we knew they never wanted Trump right like we remember back in the day when like it was you know the, the Republican party pushed everyone else in the field before Trump like they were like, fucking, yeah, how about this guy? How about this guy? How about this guy? They kept pushing a different one every week, you know? They couldn't be consistent about it. They'd push one, and then everyone would be like, nah. they push another one, and they'd be like, nah. Then finally, the crowd was just like, we want that one. We want that one. And they're just like, this guy? Okay, I guess. Here you go. <laughs> but now that he's lost and gone away, they're like, all right, thank God that's over. And now they see him trying to come back and they're like, mm, I don't think so. I don't think we're going <laughs> to, I think we're going to try to put the kibosh on that. You know, we kissed his ring when he was in power, but now that he's out, we're going to put up every fucking roadblock uh, possible to keep him from getting back to power. And they've, it's pretty, pretty clear who their new golden boy is, right? It's pretty clear that Ron DeSantis, oh yeah, he's the diamond in the rough this time. He's the guy. He's the one. He's been chosen. The light of God has shined down upon him. You know, because he captures that whole, like, you know, radical right-wing populist thing that Trump kind of tapped into, but he's articulate and he's well put together and he's politically effective because he will play fucking ball. He'll play ball. He'll play ball with the establishment. He'll play ball with anybody. You know? <laughs> He's proven that. He's proven that as governor of Florida. He's been super effective. He's been effective do at doing terrible things that are absolutely awful for the state, awful for humanity. Cruel, petty, vindictive. Um, overstepping the bounds. Probably the worst enemy of the First Amendment we've had as a presidential contender in a fucking while. Like, just routinely 
violates, if not the letter, then at least the spirit of the First Amendment on a pretty regular basis in the state of Florida. Um, if you want to know more about that, we did a Deep Fat Fried episode about him on Monday. It was my uh, section of it. The episode had two topics. One was uh, historical, or not historical murders, it was uh, celebrity murders, but most of them were kind of historical. Um, and then mine was uh, just teaching everybody about Ron DeSantis, because we hear his name around the way, but not many people really know his record, what he's about, what he's fought for, what he's stood for, the stands he's taken, or the shit that he's full of. <clears throat> Hillary is the worst enemy of the First Amendment. I mean, with all due respect, Hillary has... I mean, maybe she is an enemy of the First Amendment. I'm not going to deny that, but we don't really know that because we've never really seen it. She's never really had that kind of power. She's she's never really had... She's never really been someone who set domestic policy. You know? Uh, she's aspired to on many occasions, but she's never quite gotten there. I guess maybe as a senator. That'd be the only time. So I guess you could look at her Senate record and see, but you know, for the most part, she's been a foreign affairs lady. Um, but you know, DeSantis as governor has had plenty of opportunity to flex his, his muscle and he's used government to punish free speech on multiple occasions, just like one example. Um, you know, sports team ran, uh, you know, uh, made a tweet critical of, uh, of gun violence in America and he gutted their funding. He's like, nope, if they're gonna make political statements, then I will consider them a political entity. It's like, oh yeah, you'd definitely be doing the same thing if they made a pro-gun statement, right? I'm sure, it's all about, it's just about the principle. Uh, you know, when uh, Airbnb stopped leasing uh, homes in Israel, he uh, stopped compensating state employees for uh, stays in Airbnbs. So he, you know, he's, he's very keen on using the powers of government to stifle dissent, which to me is pretty antithetical to the, uh, the concept of freedom of speech. Uh, so he's, he's more than willing to do it. And this, by the way, the fact that every Republican you know is gearing up to support this guy is proof that any of their claims to be pro-free speech are just total nonsense. The second that you rubber stamp this guy as you, you want him as leader, You've pretty much admitted that free speech means nothing to you. It's toilet paper. You wipe your ass with the First Amendment. Um, so yeah, that's, that'd be that'd be my basic opinion on that guy. You can go learn more. Go watch the Deep Fat Fried episode or run the Deep Fat Fried channel if you're fucking interested. I'm sure we'll be talking about Ron DeSantis a lot in the coming months, weeks, years. I'm really interested to see what the first clash will look like. I'm really interested to see when when those worlds collide. The Donald Trump uh, world, the populist sort of uh, right-wing uprising of the, the represented by MAGA versus like the polished, um, administrative, articulate sort of uh, establishment response to Trump. Like, oh, you want Trump? You got, this is the new Trump, guys. Can he walk that walk? Will he impress the base? Will he be able to say the right things on that debate stage? Or is Trump going to clown on him and, and uh, show him off as the fraud he is? I don't know. That's going to be interesting to see. That's going to be some good television right there. <laughs> Yeah, cue the Power Man 5000. Now this is what it's like when worlds collide. Now this is what it's like. You don't have to be a scientist or a genius to debunk the overpopulation is not concerning video. I sent you a Bannon Hope suggestion thread, hint, hint. I mean, I'll look at it, dude. I look at every suggestion that, or, that is sent in. I am doing an Abandon Hope tomorrow for the Deep Fat Fried channel. I'm gonna do it tomorrow night, I think at 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern. Uh, you can figure it out, whatever it is in your time zone, if you want. Um, the Patreon is also linked down below if you want to join that and check that out when it uh, happens. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm really fascinated by Ron DeSantis. I'm really fascinated by the possibility of him becoming the nominee of the Republican Party. Um, I'm like Right now, my gut instinct tells me that he is going to be president in 2024 
Right now, I believe the establishment has pulled enough wool over the eyes of its constituency. I believe the Republican Party has uh, found a golden boy who can stand up to Trump. I believe that there's already a lot of, I mean, like, it's really Ron DeSantis is to lose at this point, in my opinion. Trump's got that populist wave of support, but with it, so many people, even Republican people, even people I know who love Trump, they don't want him to run again because they just think he's too much of a fucking liability. They love him. They think he's great. Probably in their hearts, they want to vote for him again. But they're like, I just don't think he can fucking win. He's just too fucking crazy. He's too unfiltered. You know? And they're like, I'd rather win. Because if there's one thing Republicans like doing, it's winning. And when they feel like he's a loser, even if they don't want to admit to themselves that that's what they're starting to think, I don't know. And then this other guy... Oh, he's winning all these legislative victories in Florida. Oh, and he's so articulate. He still believes what I believe, but he talks more coded. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're going to go for it. But the one thing that could totally change that prediction, the X factor is, if Donald Trump gets up on that debate stage with Ron DeSantis and lays waste to his ass, if he's able to successfully clown on that motherfucker and make him look like an empty suit, if he's able to like short circuit him the way he did Marco Rubio or just fucking turn him into a clown the way he did with uh, with Jeb Bush or he's able to just fucking call him out as a lying disingenuous sack of shit the way he did with Ted Cruz, then I think maybe he's got a chance still because that was always Trump's big strength was the way he rose up those, uh, the you know, rose through the ranks in the Republican primaries by just taking down every opponent that got in his way. Playing the oldest, dirtiest politics you'd ever imagine and basically doing the I'm rubber, you're glue strategy where anything you threw at him, he'd just be like, yeah, fuck that. Yeah, so what? I'm corrupt. I don't give a shit. You're damn right I'm corrupt. I know how shit works. Eh, let's be real with the people. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on Wolfpack and the Supreme Court? Oh, shit. My cup broke. No. All right. It didn't break down to where the water is. I guess I shouldn't have squeezed it. Mm. I'm just going to finish this shit off. Hold on. Didn't RNC say they're not going to do any debates? That's bullshit. Of course they're going to do fucking debates. I don't know where you've read that. I don't know if maybe someone said it, but I'm going to tell you right now, that's not going to happen. There's 100% going to be debates. If there wasn't debates, Republican voters would literally turn on them. They would like, they can't make it that obvious. If they fucking rig it to that extent where they're like, no debates. The Republican voters are going to see what's up and be like, they're trying to take our fucking choice away from us and they're going to fucking storm the fucking RNC. And they would be like, you don't represent us no more, burn. Because <laughs> one thing is, Democrats will put up with a lot of shit. Democrats will put up with all kinds of shit. Their party can fuck them every way from Sunday. The Republican party fucks the Republican voters. It better be able, it better fucking, it better slip it past them. You know, it's got to fucking be subtle. It doesn't have to be that subtle because they're not very smart voters. But as long as you can sneak it past them, you can do it. But if you can't sneak it past them, if you got to be that overt where it's like the debates are off, they're going to fucking smell it. <laughs> Wait a minute. I see what the fuck is going on. And they're going to go fucking throw a hissy fit because they got balls. There's one thing they got. They ain't got brains. Sorry, <laughs> no brains, but balls. Oh, yeah. Republicans got balls. They will go and fuck some shit up. <laughs> Why would multiple atheists delete that comment so wild? What comment? TJ, you're getting old. Damn, you are too. 
you all are. <laughs> Everybody is. I am 37. You know, I don't know. Like, do you, should I still look like I did when I was 21 at this point? I don't know. I feel like I look okay for 37. Like, I know I have a big, long beard that kind of adds to the age thing, but I feel like just focusing on the face, like, I don't have a lot of wrinkles or anything. I have some bags under my eyes because I never sleep. I have, like, a zit right here, but that's not, like, that big a deal. I'm not, like, pockmarked and blemished. I don't have no liver spots. Hmm. I have varicose vein on my leg. I don't like that. I was thinking about getting a tattoo to cover that shit up. So I'm like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> that ain't working out for me, man. But everybody gets old. I feel, honestly, I feel like, I know this is a cliche to say, but I feel better now than I ever have in my entire life. I'm in better shape now. Like I literally could not do like two or three squats up till now in my life. Now I've like, I can do like 30, 40, 50 squats, like holding weights and shit. That's cool. It's cool to be able to do stuff that I've never been able to do before because I'm actually applying myself to like strengthening my body, which I never did. DeSantis is legit a smart guy. Ivy League lawyer from middle class uh, background. When he's stupid, it's malicious. Smarter fascist coming is DeSantis. Oh, DeSantis is definitely a dude. I've honestly considered and I know some of you guys are going to think I'm a fucking prick for this, but like I've honestly considered fucking registering as a Republican to go fucking push Trump in the primaries. Like, you know, not because if he, I think, you know, if we're going to fucking take lesser of two evils to like the natural conclusion of it, like it counts on that side too, right? Like, don't we want the least evil fucking Republican as well? I don't know. I don't know what state I'm going to be living in by then. But I don't know. He's DeSantis strikes me. I think DeSantis is the fucking he's the worst. He's the he's worse than Trump by a fucking country mile. He's like Trump mixed with Ted Cruz. It's like the worst elements of both of those horrible, horrible people put into a blender and combined into like a shit Sunday. A shit shake. A dog shit shake. <laughs> Are you still a Biden bro like Vosh? I mean, I voted for Biden. It was meaningless because I'm in the reddest fucking state possible, but I did it. Uh, I did it because I said to myself, is this guy better than Trump? I think he is. Um, in retrospect, I mean, I guess, I guess I still think he is, but by a lot less than I thought, to be honest with you. Uh, in terms of policy, not much at all. In terms of rhetoric, really is the main difference you know which rhetoric it's not particularly substantive but at least he doesn't inflame the same people um i feel like there is definitely some weird fires some weird uh, flames getting fanned during the trump administration but yeah i'm not i don't know uh but desantis i think is fucking horrible um he really strikes me as as next level. Uh, so yeah, I, I think anything to stop him probably. Yeah, we just need to move Biden left. Well, according to Republicans we have, according to Republicans, he's a fucking commie at this point. He's an out and out commie. He's fucking basically, he's Marx, Engels and Stalin uh, and Lenin rolled into one. Makes Chairman Mao look like fucking Ronald Reagan, bro. <laughs> um, did you get a gun yet? Not yet. Check us out, though. Which one of these caught my eye? Tell me which one of these caught my fucking eyeball. You know which one it was. I'll tell you which one it was. Is it woke? I saw Jordan Peele's nope. Was it woke? I love this. I just, I'm, I'm never going to watch the video. I'll never even take a fucking peek at it. I'll never click on some dog shit like that. But man, that's so beautiful to me. It's so fucking pretty. You know what I love about it? It, it, because these people have now subject, like they're, they've now put their media diet on like an approval list. Can you loudly shout a stream of vicinities? Fuck shit, bitch ass cunt motherfucker. 
There you go. Thanks for the 199. Um, <laughs> I don't understand this. Like everything, everything these people consume in their media diet now has to be run through the like approval board of these like weird right wing media figures that let them know like it's woke. It's not woke. It's good. It's good, but it's woke a little bit. Like they literally have to, everything now has to pass through like, is it woke? Is it woke? Dude, I watch movies and sh I watch shows and I read books and I, all this stuff. And I read, I, I, I subject myself to other people who don't agree with me all the time. There's a lot of fucking works of, of fiction out there. And even just like some of the books I read that are, I read because I want like advice on like overcoming fear. Here's a Navy SEAL that's going to tell you about overcoming fear. That dude was right wing as fuck. It wasn't super in your face, but he was definitely fucking, you could tell from some of the shit he was saying that he was definitely on the right. I didn't fuck, oh man. Oh fuck, it's a, this, it's a sleep, you guys. Is it sleepy? <laughs> I only watch woke things, not sleepy things. Like, come on, man. Like, it's a fucking movie. It's a movie about UFOs or whatever the fuck it's about. Because I guess it's kind of like, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck happened. I haven't seen it yet. But like, it's... It, who gives a shit if it's woke or not? What does that even fucking mean? It doesn't mean anything to anybody anymore. Woke is just like, I don't like it because it fucking, I don't know, felt like it was preachy or something. I don't know. <laughs> like, there's so much fucking shit that, that comes out that represents all these different points of view. Sometimes there's stuff that's apolitical. Sometimes there's stuff that has like a kind of a right wing view. Sometimes there's stuff kind of a left wing view. Sometimes there's stuff that has like kind of like pro-military messages coded in it, pro-cop messages, like stuff I don't necessarily agree with. I can still enjoy the fucking movie because I'm not a baby. I can actually fucking watch something that maybe doesn't agree with my point of view and just enjoy the other fucking stuff about it. Like, hey, yeah, I don't really like that messaging, but cool scene, really well shot, beautiful cinematography, really well-written character. Like, what? But now everything to you just comes down to like, is it woke? Is it woke? Who's made better la music in the last 10 years? Trent Reznor, Marilyn Manson. The same answer as to who made better music for the previous 10 years. <laughs> I mean, look, Trent Reznor is probably a better musician. No doubt about that. But he ain't never had that fucking swagger. He ain't never had that fucking style. He ain't never had that fucking pizzazz. He ain't never brought you to that fucking emotional place. Um, can't beat him joining Clinton, Obama, Biden. Yeah. The Disney story you said the other day reminds me of how Americans are like brand zombies. They'll follow anything their favorite brands say. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like Americans are pretty quick to fucking turn on a brand the second it pisses them off. Like, no. But then they're pretty quick to come back too. I like how I'm getting like usurped by these butts. Like how that just covers me right up. Like, yeah, he's not important. This butt's important. <laughs> TJ, are you suggesting woke is uh, being used as a word for themes in media which offend conservative sensibilities? Unbelievable. I, I don't even know if it's that. I don't even know what. I don't even know what it means anymore. I've literally seen them describe stuff as woke, and I just like flat out don't even get what the fuck they're talking about. Should go on Joe Rogan again if asked? Yeah, I mean, it's actually closer to me now. I'd go. I don't give a shit. How is fear now? What? <laughs> How is fear now? I don't know. Fear is okay. It's okay to fear. Uh, let's check this out. So this is uh, Sargon of Akkad talking to some dude. I don't even know if this dude speaks in this, honestly. But let's listen. Look at what Western culture fucking produces now. She's oh, sorry. You guys don't like that. Uh, I'll slow it down. Well, we can go a little faster, right? You guys don't mind if I speed it up a smidgen. I could speed it up a, a tad. 
You guys can handle fucking 1.25. All right. Look at what Western culture fucking produces now. Just, exactly. Jesus Christ. It is embarrassing to be a part of the West and see Hollywood producing. I'm just going to replace this guy. Of some, and there's, oh, I could go on. I'm the guy now. How they're, they're just the worst things in the world. But what I find really interesting is that it's not even that they, they're bad. It's like there's something aesthetically defective about everything mm. they do. And I've, I've been looking at it like, I, I had to watch, my, my wife's a big fan of Resident Evil, right? The video games. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the actual, you know, the, the original video games and the, the first couple of movies. She really liked them, right? She's a big fan of them. Right, okay, fine. And so... Dude, I hate to say this, but I'm with his wife on this, um, about the original Resident Evil movies. They're not good movies. I want to make that clear. I want to make it clear that the Resident Evil movies are not good. However, they're pretty, they're pretty entertaining. Especially the first few. I don't know. I don't know. I like I like the first uh, couple movies. <laughs> uh, Ten dollars, big jiggly butts. That's from Madman the Pope. He says, "Oh, big jiggling butts." New series comes out. Oh, we have to watch this. Oh, okay, go on then. And it's so bad. She was like, "I hate this. This isn't Resident Evil. This is shit." And I'm like, "Yeah, I know. Let's keep watching though, right? Because I'm enjoying just how shit it is." And yeah. one thing that I've noticed about like everything, and you see this in like modern Star Wars and everything, right? There's a there's a kind of so, so far, what we've established is um, Sargon does not like the new Resident Evil show. Um, I've never, I've not seen it, so I don't know. Quality that the people on the screen have that you don't find in previous eras, because the people in previous eras were made in a different way, right? Look they at were. how, look at how soft skinned all of these people are. Look at how like round their features are, you know, mm -hmm. look at how like the the way they try and set their jaws when they're trying to give you an impression of an emotion shows you they've never really experienced true hardship, true loss, true confrontation, right? These are the, these are the products of like the helicopter parenting and the excessive uh, HR departments where no one can have a problem H. they have to solve themselves. And so you, and this, this, this drips off of them to me, you know, I'm looking at these like, you know, 23 year old actresses or whatever, and they just look like children. Whereas if you go back and watch these, say, like the original Star Wars, Han Solo looks like an adult man. You know? Yeah, because he was. <laughs> Wait, like the complaint is that um, a 23 year old actress today doesn't look like a 35 year old man because he was a 35 year old man when they shot A New Hope. Han Solo was played by a 35-year-old man named Harrison Ford. Yeah, of course, he doesn't look like a 23-year-old actress. And what is this weird fucking thing like, oh man, all these actors today, just had they had it too good, it's clear. Like, they're actors. Their whole shtick is they pretend to be people they're not. Like, actors have always been soft, prima donna motherfuckers. That's always been the reputation. Go back and look at fucking actors in the 70s and shit. You don't think they were soft? Wait, wait, brilliant, TJ. Wait, wait, hold on. I got more. Hold up, Sargon. Sargon's in the chat. I have more for you. Check it out. Uh, this, I want to show you this. Oh, wait, this is what you said is real art. This is uh, in the comments section of this. He's like, this is true art. This is what art really is. My little painted figurines. This is a coloring book for grown-ups. And I, I use the word grown-ups loosely. That's what that is. Uh, this is... Hold on, I have to get out of the way. This is fucking Han Solo. Okay? This is the guy that Sargon just gave us is like, This is the ultimate example of a man. Back when men used to look like men. Does he, though? Like, here's the thing, Sargon. You and I... When we were kids, we saw this guy. Like, you and I were like 10 years old or some shit when we saw this dude. I was younger than that. I was like five, six, seven. So, yeah, of course he looked like a big, strong man to a fucking 10 year old. If you saw this dude for the first time right now, you would not be like, whoa! Holy shit, the manliness just exudes off the fucking screen! It's a 35 year old dude. Of course, he looks like a man. He is a man. Why is he being compared to a 23 year old actress? She looks like a child because now you're an old man. 
it's you're you're like you need to fucking realize you need you're basing this on the time y that you saw them first. You were a little kid when you saw Han Solo. She's so like, ooh, big man. Now you're an old fuck, and you see these 23 year old actors like, oh, what the fuck? She looks like a goddamn baby, cause she is compared to you. Meanwhile, the fucking top paid actor in 2022. The biggest star in Hollywood is literally a like giant mountain of muscles that pisses testosterone and could rip Harrison Ford in half. So this like weird narrative of like, oh, it's all gone soft. It's all gone soft is a lie. Be meanwhile, look at the motherfucker saying it. Look at the motherfucker talking about, oh, they're all soft now. Like, does this guy look hard? <laughs> is this what hard you know, is now? You know, he, it's, it's a different... Is it? Because I don't think so. Mm, I'm not, I'm not... Are you guys getting like an air of like toughness coming off this dude? Does this seem like the guy who can be talking shit about how other people are soft, doughy, and round? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. The irony of Sargon calling TJ a reactionary? Is he? TJ, they're all soft. Okay, maybe they are. But why am I hearing it from a marshmallow? I don't know. Uh, anyway, let's hear some more of what uh, Sargon has to say. Different time, and it's different people. More and you can see the softness yes! in everything they produce, and so there's this layer of inauthenticity about everything. You know, all of the all of the way they try to portray a genuine human emotion that you know they've never really had, and so they don't know how to try and fool you into thinking. There's no verisimilitude. To Dude, actors literally, it doesn't matter if they've ever experienced the emotion in their life. All they need to know is what their face has to do. And if there's an actor who can't do that face, well, it's because whoever was in charge decided they it didn't matter if they were a good actor. It just mattered if they looked cool in the role. Because that's a lot of times what matters, but that's always been the case. There's always been like popcorn movies and there's always been like award-winning avant-garde shit. But the problem is that Sargon is not accounting for the nostalgia filter. He doesn't realize that like, yeah, Star Wars was made in 1977, but so was a lot of dog shit. So was mountains and mountains and mountains of dog shit. Good little gems, masterpieces that like, whoa, this blew me away. Those only come around every so often. And you know what? The older you are, the more set in your ways and crusty, the less likely that is to happen to you. And Sargon, you and I, we're getting old, buddy. That's right, we're getting old. I see, I got gray in my beard, you got gray in your beard. Noth it's, gonna, it's gonna be a lot harder for something to hit us that way anymore, buddy. We're not gonna get that again. Maybe we will, but probably not. Because you know why? Star Wars was amazing because we were little kids. We were little ass kids and it was like magic. Whoa. <laughs> You're not gonna have that fucking naivete that innocence again their authenticity it's all fake it's pretend it's movies dude of course there's no authenticity it's all fake it's pretend it's make-believe look how round they are this affects my point in no way at all tj i mean other than totally dismantling it i don't know <laughs> i mean like what is the point to any of it and and that's the thing you know on top of all the shit writing and the lack of understanding of what a story is meant to be etc etc it's it's this like core of dead inauthentic matter that lays at the heart of the western cultural project at the moment and it's because the people involved are all technicians right there's not a single artist left not what because an artist is someone who has gone through some hard human event and has come out star wars sucks and i've always disliked it well then, why'd you use Har Why'd you use Han Solo as an example of like this great like archetype of like yes, 
this is what a heroic figure is. <laughs> Acting is just a job to me. Carne of Assad, <laughs> Asada, is just suffering a case of overgrown boy syndrome where his favorite kid's things are changing for another generation, another form of brand zombie. TJ, the purpose of art is to see one into thinking that's not fake. Yeah, but don't you, don't you think maybe you're a little bit more cynical now than you once were? Sargon, if you want to actually talk about this, I'm happy to have you on, all right? But I can't do it right now because I got to go to the gym in 45 fucking minutes. And I know it's going to take longer than that. So just reach out to me somewhere. I know you probably have like a fucking sock Twitter or something. Reach out and we'll fucking arrange a discussion and you and I can sit down and fucking figure it out, okay? Because, because like, we're not going to fucking, we're not going to figure it out with uh, me responding to your chats. He's literally right here having him on. I have, dude, I have to go in 45 fucking minutes. There's no way. This is definitely going to take longer than that. DM me. On YouTube? Does that, does YouTube even still have that feature? Art has no inherent purpose other than what you get out of it. I agree with that. Even then, does it really matter? He loves hard men. Well, he should love The Rock. The Rock's a hard man. Harder than this fucking cream puff. Oh, yeah. Ultimate man. Apparently little bitch. I don't know. <laughs> you certainly won't figure it out. That's true. Uh, what? The DM thing? Dude, I literally just write me on Twitter. Just write me on Twitter. It's super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Just write it to me. You're obviously eager to be heard on this. So, like, I don't have a problem bringing you on. I don't give a shit. Come on. Like, write me. We'll fucking arrange it. You come on my fucking show. We'll talk. It'll be beautiful. Now, I've already missed one gym fucking thing this week. I'm not missing it again. I'm not putting my fucking personal life on hold. I'm not working my schedule around Sargon of a fucking Akkad, okay? I went on a fucking show and talked things out with like four dudes who were all against me. Like just the other day, it's on this channel. There's no reluctance. I'll do it. I don't give a shit, but I'm going to do it on my time. Write him a physical letter by mail. Discord. Discord works. I don't know who you are on Discord. But yeah, I have Discord. Halle Berry was a hot cat woman. Sticking to his Discord guns. All right, fine. We can do Discord. Give me your Discord. I don't know where you're going to send it. Someone, have one of your lackeys send me your Discord, and I will fucking write to you on that. I don't give a shit. We'll do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, then. On the other side, I'm going, oh, my God. I need to try and explain this to people. I need to yeah. try and explain to them what just explain happened to me. to me. And I've got, you know, the, the clay, the, the, the whatever I'm going to work into this wild piece of art. You're not now going to understand. Now or never, you're CJ? Out okay, then never. Figure Fuck out off. Into it. And the things, I don't even know what I'm going to end up doing, you know, when I'm, but I'm going to put myself into this. Those people are gone, man. Um, did, yeah. I take you what's Mat Matrix Resurrections, right? I the haven't. latest one. I oh, my God. Dude, he's, watch watch you. he's fixing it. Okay. I thought for a second I was going to be able to agree with Sargon here. I was like, oh, shit. He's going to talk shit on Matrix Resurrections. There's no way I'm going to defend that piece of shit. But then he literally goes on to actually, like, he likes fucking Matrix Resurrections. He's like, oh, actually, it's quite brilliant. I don't know if Lana Wachowski intended it this way. But what it is is about the death of art and how everything has become a production. Matrix Resurrections fucking sucks. Matrix Resurrections is unwatchable. Like, they have this dude playing um, Agent Smith, only now he's Neo's boss, and he's, like, flamboyantly gay, which is fine, except it's distracting as fuck. So instead of, like, Mr. Anderson, you get, like, Mr. Anderson! <laughs> it's like, what? No. No. And uh, the fight scene, the fight choreography is terrible. I don't know what the fuck happened. Like, you go watch that subway fight scene in the original matrix and then you go watch the new stuff and it's like it's just not cut together well it's not choreographed well 
Keanu Reeves can't do it like he used to. And the little side guys they put on to like, they brought on the fuck, fucking production to get him to do it. Um, they suck. Like they're no good. My thesis that everything they make sucks. Uh, which everything who makes sucks. Hollywood? I mean, you seem like you really enjoyed Matrix Resurrections. You seem like you got a lot out of it. So whatever, maybe you didn't enjoy it, but you certainly appreciated it on some level. Whatever. TJ gets Sargon on. I've already explained this. I've already explained why I'm not doing that. I'm going, I'm literally leaving in like 40 minutes. Oh, no, no, watch it. It's not a story, it's a confession, right? <laughs> I, I, did a, I did a big breakdown on it on lootseeds.com, actually, because it, this, this was so perfect, right? The entire film is Lana Wachowski's admission that every artist has died, and she is essentially like the last artist, and this is her confession of the end of her career and her profession as an artist, because she, in it, right? So the, the, the framing of it is that Neo is actually uh, a video game designer, um, and he, so he's 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 made something called the Matrix, which is the you know the, a video game of the film. You know, so it's slightly different. But it's basically mm -hmm. he's made the Matrix. And dude, I I totally interpreted this film different. My interpretation of the film was that the movie was an excuse for why the movie sucked. I feel like she was trying to do this thing where it's like, I'll have my cake and eat it too. I'll make a shitty movie, but I'll make the shittiness of the movie the point of the movie. And then people will be like, aha, yeah, brilliant. And somehow Sargon's taken it like in a whole other direction where it's like, now it's about the death of art. Now it's about factory filmmaking and how everything has become joyless, rote, and technical. <laughs> but like, there's still plenty of good movies coming out. I'm like, sorry. Like, there's still plenty of entertaining shit and there's obviously artists working on it. Uh, like, if, if you sitting around like coloring in some prefab figures with your little, like, yeah, I'm gonna get the, the blue right, yeah. Like if that's art, then certainly the people who do like sound design and costume design, all that shit, those people are still artists. You don't get to be like, I, don't, I didn't enjoy the movie, so every like artistic person that worked on it and created things for it is not legit. They're not a real artist like me painting my fucking faggoty figurines. Give me a break, bitch. I'm being insightful, TJ. <sighs> okay, sure thing, buddy. You you sure are. I uh, I appreciate you. Uh, I want to show you guys my favorite Twitter account, dude. This guy right here. Carnivore Aurelius, dude. He's one of these carnist guys. He's one of these dudes that has made his like whole existence about how uh, like eating meat nonstop is like the healthiest possible lifestyle. No vegetables, no fucking seed oils, none of that bullshit. All you do is you just sit around eating meat all day long all day long have you read the boys comic by garth ennis i found them to be darker and edgier uh and more of a superhero deconstruction than the show you know i actually read some of those comics when they first came out uh and i didn't i didn't vibe with them i remember i i actually because i was such a fan of garth ennis i loved like preacher and shit so i bought the first few issues of the boys when it came out i think i read like the first four or five issues and i mean i didn't hate it but it just didn't suck me in enough for me to like continue to go to it and it was kind of like the end of my love affair with comic books as well i kind of fell off the whole comic book bandwagon because i just got tired of being price gouged by that industry so i'm like eh whatever fuck that uh but um, you know, I, I liked it all right, but then when I saw uh, the show, at first I didn't really realize what it was, and it wasn't until I watched the first episode, I'm like, oh, fuck, this is that comic I read, like, I don't know, 15 years ago or whatever, whenever it fucking first came out. But this guy right here, anyway, Car Carnivore Aurelius, uh, it's a play on, um, actually Sargon would like this guy, because he kind of has the same thing where he takes like a historical figure, but this guy... 
He's, he's uh, you know, take, took, taken Marcus Aurelius, like a very like stoic, you know, centrist sort of philosopher and turned him into this like carnivore, right? <laughs> uh, so not everything on here is gold, by the way, but a lot of it's fucking gold. And a lot of it's just weird. Like it shows you a worldview that you're probably not used to. One that you've rarely seen before. Uh, this beef liver is so good, even a vegan would love it. He's selling, this is hit, hit from his shop. He's selling beef liver crisps, which I don't know about you guys, but this shit sounds insane. Like beef liver crisps does not sound good to me. Uh, please don't be too hard on the youth of today. Look, even your grandfather needed a safe space. It shows like the soldiers in the trenches like, oh, wow. Theirs was truly a greater generation. The way that they were fed into the meat grinder by the powerful elites really made them better people. The fact that they came home with PTSD and beat their wives and kids. Really beautiful. What a superior race. What a great generation. The greatest generation. So this is a uh, real reason I'm not on Tinder. I was kicked off. So this is uh, a supposed Tinder interaction. I don't know. But this is funny as fuck. Uh, she says, hey, what's up? He said, birth control shrinks the ovaries by up to 50% and changes your pheromones. Vegetables are not a health food and produce pesticides to fend off predators. Women's cosmetics have over 150 cancer-causing ingredients. You're not going to be happy working for a big company and your butthole is a portal to, uh, for the sunlight. She's like, hmm, that's kind of interesting. And I've never heard that before. Sort of turns me on. We should meet up. Sorry, I am just here to educate. This is the great, I mean, like, is this, is this anything short of the greatest exchange in human history? Like, is there a better interaction between two human beings than this? The only reason I am not doubled over with laughter right now is because I already got it out of my system. If I had not read this a thousand times and masturbated as I fucking chortled, you know, I would not be where I am now, okay? Like, this is... <laughs> This is fucking great. This is fucking classic. This doesn't get beat. This is like pinnacle uh, humor. I don't know. And the more that I, the more I look at it, the more, I mean, I don't really believe it's real. I feel like it's memes, but man, I don't want to know. If it is memes, I don't want to know it's memes. I want to believe. I choose to believe because there's so much great about this. The fact that she initiates the conversation, that's great. The fact that after she says, hey, what's up? He just like, you know, gets goes into this fucking crazy screed of like pseudo facts. And the fact that she's turned on by it and now wants him, that's beautiful. And then the fact that he turns her down like, no, I don't want you. I don't care how wet your fucking pussy is right now, bitch. I am here but to educate the masses. <laughs> uh, why do anti-wokes... This is from Mixoli Mixolidian. Why do anti-wokes refuse to demolish turfs for hating men wanting to ban porn and denying science? Um, let me read this again. Why do anti-wokes refuse to demolish turfs for hating men wanting to ban porn and denying science. Oh, well, it's just like a, you know, useful idiot, right? I mean, if you got someone that's going to agree with your side, I mean, you don't really care. Like, there's other disagreements you might have down the line, but if you can form a coalition for the moment, you're just going to do it. They'll, they'll stab each other in the back eventually. Something will happen where they're going to have to fucking turn on each other. And that's fine. Let it happen. It's part of the natural course of things. Um, you can eat animals and love them too. And he's got like this like Chad meme wearing like a John Deere hat. Someday I'm going to eat all these guys, but till then I have to take good care of them so they can feed me later. Aw, it's kind of touching, you know, kind of gets you right here. Like, wow, it's a beautiful thing. Fluorescent lights kill dopamine in the brain. This is why everyone in the office all day is such a zombie. Yeah, that's one possibility. 
Um, the other possibility is it's because they're in an office building and being forced to do like the most boring, tedious labor in the most stifling environment possible. I think that might have a little bit more to do with it than the fucking uh, quality of the lighting. But yeah, I mean, it says bright light exposure reduces TH positive dopamine neurons, implications of light pollution and Parkinson's disease epidemiology. I don't deny that maybe this is legit science, but that's not why people in the office are fucking... Ugh. People in the office are like that because they're in the office, okay? It does look like a poster for animal porn. That's true. Uh, lots of women are waking up to how amazing being a stay-at-home mom is, caring for newborns, ensuring a home is beautiful, growing a garden, taking care of the bison, homeschooling kids, not working for a soul-sucking boss, things that really matter in life. I don't know. If I was a woman, I feel like I'd rather be with a soul-sucking boss than <laughs> this fucking raving lunatic, but, you know, uh, I, that's, that's me. And I'm not a woman, so I don't know. Carnivore Aurelius, yeah. Uh, they don't want... Here's a picture of some chickens on, a, on a, a bench. They don't want you to know that you can just stop paying attention to the news, move to a village by the sea, get chickens, cows, and grow all your own food. Yeah, I guess if you uh, have, like, a bunch of money, you can do that. Because uh, I hate to break it to you, but, like, quaint little villages by the sea? Kind of expensive to live in, you know? Usually if there's like a quaint little beautiful village and a bunch of like land costs money, quaint little villages by the sea costs money, uh, moving to another country, which you might have to do to find a quaint little village in the sea, depending on where you live, costs a lot of money. Uh, chickens and cows uh, aren't free. Growing your food isn't free. Hey, man, just want to say I love the new energy of the vids you drop. May the writing muse be with you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yeah, I mean, like, this is none of this is free. None of this is just like, yeah, just do it on a whim. You can't just do this with zero monies. If you can, I don't think you're asked to be on Twitter. Because this is clearly not how you're living. The boys comic was awful. It's just a bunch of trench coat wearing Gary Stew's curb stomping one dimensional soups. Um, I mean, that's kind of what I want out of Garth Ennis, though. You know? <laughs> I don't know. Are you going? Are you not going to talk to Sargon of Akkad? He, I want to talk to him. I gave him an invitation. He said, I'm like, I'm not, but I'm going to do it on my time. And he's like, it's going to be on my time, now or never. And I said, if that's my choice, if you tell me now or never, I'm going to say never. If it's now or, if it's like, I have to dance to his tune, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to dance to my tune. He can dance to his. We can come up to him. We, like, what's wrong with him coming to me and deciding on a mutually agreeable time for us to fucking meet and talk about shit? Like, why can't we do that? Why is there this insistence that it must be this very moment when he knows I'm busy? I'm First of all, I'm doing a show. I have stuff to cover. Second of all, I'm going to be gone soon. I'm assuming that a conversation between the two of us is probably at least going to last two or three hours. There's at least that much to fucking talk about. I don't have time because I'm not going to be here for two or three hours. Now, if he wants to reach out to me, he knows where to find me. My Twitter DMs are open. Apparently, he wants to talk on fucking Discord or something. I don't know if he, someone can give me his Discord. I'll reach out to him. I don't give a shit. But I'm not just going to fucking be like, I'm not going to be like, he comes to me like, let me on now. And I'm just going to be like, sure thing. Like, if I, if I had no plans for the rest of the night, I probably wouldn't give a shit. I'd just be like, okay, yeah, sure. Come on. Come on board. Like, if I had fucking three or four more hours to fucking kill, sure. But I don't. I got to be gone in now, like, 25 minutes. So, I don't know. I mean, like, to me, it's perfectly reasonable to be like, hey, let's arrange a time to do this. But apparently, I'm wrong about that. Apparently, uh, I'm supposed to just, like... The, 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 the right and proper thing for me to do is the very second he shows up demanding to come on the stream, I have to let him on then, even if it's not convenient for me. So basically, I'm just supposed to be his little bitch. I'm just supposed to let him call the fucking shots. Fuck no. No. Uh, that's ridiculous. Um, No more Sargon talk. I mean, people are asking about it, so... There's nothing more attractive than a woman who's uh, incredibly pure. 
See this? That's, does that have creepy vibes? Anyone else? I don't know. <laughs> Someone's like starts to talk about purity and shit. You know? It's a little weird to me. Um, chronic weed smoking is the worst thing for masculinity. It destroys fertility, testosterone, motivation, and escape mechanism from emotions you could confront head on. Every now and then, sure, but don't make it a daily habit. Okay. I mean, that's probably fair enough. I mean, I used to smoke weed every single day, and now I only smoke it like every other day. Well, you know, five days a week, maybe. But I don't smoke it every day. There's been fucking entire, like, three or four day stints where I haven't smoked weed. So, yay for me. But I'm going to smoke some now. Because you reminded me it exists. So, yeah, that's good. Um... <clears throat> Uh, if you don't need weed or alcohol to enjoy hanging out with your friends, you need new friends. Or if you do need weed or alcohol. Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to enjoy them either way. Chronic weed smoking. Oh, yeah, I already read that one. Uh, humans, human whose ancestors were hunting for food, raising children, sleeping under stars, frolicking in fields, dancing around the fire, is now sitting in a cubicle, goes to doctor and says he's sad. Doctor, you're depressed and can only heal with meds. How fucking dumb are we? Like, well, what's the alternative? We should go back to, like, the old ways? Like, I don't know. It seems to me like that's not going to work. Imagine thinking sex with randos on Tinder is cooler than making babies with someone you love. You could do both. You know, you could go, you could make, you could make babies with someone you love and on the side fuck a bunch of, uh, you know, <laughs> of whores on Twitter. Or not Twitter, uh, a Tinder. Um... You know, that's, that's always an option. Just letting you know. Uh, so uh, here's a, a climate. Could dimming the sun help turn down global heating? It might sound like science fiction, but some are exploring solar geoengineering tech to st uh, stop temperature rising. They say it's relatively cheap and simple, while others uh, warn it could be catastrophic. Why? Well, because you're fucking with the sun. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty obvious why. Fuck you. I actually kind of agree with them on that. Like, we probably shouldn't mess with the sun. Shouldn't be trying to, like, control the sun, maybe. At least not just quite yet. I don't think we're there. Um, imagine thinking you're healthy, eating a salad, but covering in, uh, covering it in incredibly toxic Thousand Island dressing loaded with seed oils. Seed oils are not toxic. High fructose corn syrup, bad for you, but not toxic. And titanium dioxide. I don't know if that's toxic or not. I would assume it's at least approved by the FDA, but I'm assuming that probably doesn't mean much to you. But yeah, he's so scared of the oils, man. I don't understand. What is this fear of these of these seed oils? Like, I don't get the the seed oil terror. Like, what is it supposed to do to you? I see this guy reference seed oils as if they're some sort of like Lovecraftian nightmare all the time. But I have no idea, like what what the seed oils are gonna do. <laughs> like, how are they gonna hurt you? Are the seed oils in the room with us right now? Um, here we go. Now they're going to say that we're polluting the environment from eating too much protein. Eating too much protein makes pee a problem pollutant in the U.S. Protein-packed diets add excess nitrogen to the environment through urine, rivaling pollution from agricultural fertilizers. I mean, if, them, if them's the facts, them, them's the facts. I don't know. Like, you can't... This dude... I mean, I've seen this dude cite scientific studies before. You can't be like... When the science is something you like, all that you're like, yeah, look, see, science agrees with me. But then when science says something you don't like, you're like, bullshit, conspiracy. Like, come on, you either believe it, you believe in science or you don't, okay? And if you want to criticize this, you can't just criticize it from an ideological perspective, like, oh no, I don't like the result, I don't like this, the, the what this means, so fuck that. You have to actually challenge the science in a meaningful way. Uh, drinking fluorinated. Here he is. What do you think? This is science. This is science. You can't be like, this is bad. This is good. Just based on like what you like and don't like. Drinking fluoridated water during pregnancy may lower IQ in sons. Controversial study says. I mean, it even says right there, controversial study, which kind of usually means like not that great, not that well conducted of a study. Study from an obvious like biased source. But, you know, who knows? Maybe maybe the study's legit. But if it is, you got to fucking, you got to accept both. You know? And if you want to challenge one, find a basis to challenge it. 
You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that because they say controversial study in this headline, they probably let you know in the, in the actual body of the text why it's controversial. But I guess we're not going to get into that because that's, you know, <laughs> that might be a problem. Uh, tell the truth. Help others, stay humble, stop watching porn, eat real food, have gratitude, get morning sunlight, breathe through your nose, drink real water, sun your genitals, have sacred sex, quiet your mind, stop eating seed oils. There it is again, the seed oils. Have a silly goose time. This is the way. What the fuck is this lifestyle, bro? What is this shit? All right, tell the truth. Fine. Fair enough. Why is it always just play the fucking shit? Just keep playing the music. Help others. I agree with that. Help others. Stay humble. I don't agree with that. Humility sucks. Humility is trash. And obviously, this guy isn't humble either. This guy like goes up to people and fucking tells them like gives them like list of rules for life. That's not humility. Stop watching porn. No thanks. I'm gonna continue. Eat real food. Like, what's real? Like, what do you mean real food? Like, you hate vegetables. So that's like most shit. Like, basically, like, I mean, you're carnivore. I realize, I mean, obviously, what you mean by real food is like meat. Just eat meat. Just say that. Just say eat nothing but meat. Because <laughs> that's what you really mean. Have gratitude. Okay. Get morning sunlight. I do right before I go to bed. Uh, breathe through your nose. Yeah, I mean, I will. I'll try when it's not congested, you know. I mean, <sighs> that, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Uh, drink real water. As a what? As opposed to what, dude? The water. <laughs> it's the water I just drank fake. Oh, it's the fluoride. Okay, yeah, he hates fluorination. Um, sun your genitals. What? What are we doing? Why am I why am I sunning my genitals, bro? <laughs> why am I doing that? It, what's that supposed to do? I've I've heard this meme around the way. What is this? Can anyone explain this to me? Does anyone know what the fuck is meant by this? Like what is sunning my genitals supposed to do for me? Like, huh? I eat fake food. Me too all the time. Raw water only. Sun your genitals. What is the supposed health benefit of that? Is it supposed to like raise vitality? Is it going to make you like a more of a man or something? I, none of you guys seem to know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, gratitude really is a good one, though. That's a nice one. Um, have sacred sex. I mean, I'll try anything once. Why not? Quiet your mind. <sighs> what if I fucking could, dude? Especially when I'm trying to go to bed. I would love it. I'd love to shut my fucking yammering, stammering, uh, chattering brain the fuck up. I'd love it. It'd be absolutely glorious and gorgeous and beautiful in all ways if I could actually do that. But I have, uh, I've yet to discover that uh, ability. Stop eating seed oils. Why? Why? What are they do? What do you think they do? What do you think they fucking do? Makes your sperm have a tan. Yeah, I always fucking thought those motherfuckers looked a little pasty. I have a silly goose time. I don't know what the fuck. This seems so tonally out of fucking place with the rest, but uh, it's all good. Ask any physically fit old guy their secret to staying in shape. They'll all say some version of the following. I just never quit. Okay. Christian Bale. Atheist Bale. So apparently I'd like get, I'd like have a lot uh, healthier of a pigmentation and I'd look a lot better if I just believed in God because God favors his people with, with gorgeousness. That's why, you know, um, Jerry Falwell always looked so good, right? You know, that's why uh, <laughs> Kent Hovind is a beautiful man, you know? Um, <laughs> what's that one? Pat Robertson, dude. Yeah, he's a go he's gorgeous. He's so hot. All these Christians, man, they, they look great. It just somehow that just having that religion just makes them look pretty. I don't know what it is. It's almost like 
I don't know. Actually, it's almost like there's no connection between your religious beliefs and how you look. Beyond, like, maybe how you dress or something. I fear no man, but that thing, and then it shows a bottle of canola oil. It scares me. Dude, what is going on? If you Google sunning genitals, this guy's site is one of the top results. Oh, my God. Yeah, really? I have to see this. Hold on. Holy shit, it is. What? There, He has a website. I didn't even know this dude had a fucking website. I always just, I thought this guy was just a Twitter. I just thought this dude had a Twitter page and that was it. And now, like, we've gone to the whole, we've gone, we've gone a level deeper. Why you need to sun your genitals and balls and perineum. Taint. Just say taint. Why, why, why can't anyone say taint anymore? It's your fucking taint, bro. Sunning your genitals is the most important thing you can do. Wow. More important than eating. More important than sleeping. More important than breathing. More important than, I don't know, going to work. Paying your fucking bills. It's fuck all that shit. The only thing that matters is sitting on the lawn with your fucking legs spread and your dick pointing up at the fucking sky like that's what that's what really matters guys it's the most important thing that there is it's not just a massive f you to modern society dude it's not no one society is not like oh man he really showed us society does not give a shit if at the most it's like a passing amusement like that dude is like out there sunning his balls no one society is not like ah oh, fuck it's not a take that okay like it no one cares it doesn't hurt it's it's not a thing okay you're not it's not your middle finger to society uh it is also incredibly important for energy levels and rejuvenating your health let the sun shine where the sun don't shine here's why hi chris mcdougall thank you for the ten dollars Number one, sunlight improves genital... Is there going to be actual dicks on here? Hold on. I got to, like, go through this page and make sure there's no actual dicks in it. All right. We're good. Okay. Number one, sunlight improves genital function. Uh, the sunlight is more than UV rays. It has red slash NIR full color spectrum. Mitochondria present in every cell need red slash NIR for optimal function. The more you hide a body part uh, from the sun, the weaker it will be. Red light is necessary for ATP production via cytochrome C oxidase. New research uh, around structured water suggests that the water in your cells can capture energy from infrared light, become more gel-like, helping to increase ATP production. This is called EZ water. Okay. So I guess um, that gobbledygook means it improves genital function. I've, I didn't see any study cited that actually says that, but... I've seen some like massive, you know, deductive uh, leaps. But hey, you know, whatever. Number two, it increases in fertility and youth hormone production. Uh, this is why red light slash NIR have been shown to increase fertility and youth hormone production. Oh, well, we're going to get it. The study showed, this study showed that getting sun on the chest increased testosterone 120%, but exposing the testes increased at 200%. Okay, where's the test? It's down here. Okay, cool. Uh, testosterone spike when sunning chest, 120. Testosterone spike when sunning genitals, 200. Holy shit. Experimental results. The results in our group of patients up to the present have been surprisingly uniform. Figure one demonstrates the typical reaction. Uh, the androsterone um, excretion determined twice before starting irradiation was about 70 IU. Uh, androsterone per liter and approximately per day. 
Uh, after five irradiations of the chest, the hormone output was raised to 155 IU per liter. That is an increase of 120%. These five irradiations were given in five consecutive days in the usual manner of application of ultraviolet light for medical purposes. Namely, the eyes are closed and, in addition, covered with dark glasses. In this particular case, head, chest, genitalia, and thighs were exposed to irradiation, the light being focused on the lower thorax and upper abdomen. After an interval of eight days without irradiation, the hormone uh, output, uh, I don't know what it did, uh, did. it did because uh, it stops there. Hey, TJ, elderly Zoomer here. The old days of the internet and YouTube seemed so simple when I was in elementary school. Do you sometimes miss those days? Um, no. I don't have any nostalgia for past uh, times or pl past places. I'm just live in the now. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe there's some to this. We'll take a look. See if we can find... I wish you would cite the study so we could go look at it a little deeper. But here's, the, here's this one. We'll maybe get to look at that. Increase in sexual energy. What does this say? Personal overview of the application of LLLT in severely infertile Japanese females. Uh, 74 females with severe infirmity in whom assisted reproductive technology, ART, has been unsuccessful, participated in the first uh, part of the study from October 1996 to April 2000. LLLT supplied, uh, this is just describing the, the diode and the uh, amount in Oshiro's proximity priority technique, average 21.08 sessions. Uh, with or without other art approaches, based on successful outcomes, the study was then extended to March 2012, amassing a final total of 701 patients. Pregnancy was achieved in the first part of the trial in 16 patients, of whom 11 achieved successful live delivery, blah, 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 blah. blah. So what is LLLT? Low lever, low level laser therapy. So is that the same thing as sunlight? Is it? I don't. I don't know. Hold on. Low level laser therapy, or photobiomodulation, is a form of medicine that applies low level lasers or light emitting diodes to the surface of the body. Whereas high power lasers are used in laser medicine to cut or destroy tissue, it is uh, claimed that application of low power lasers relieves pain or stimulates uh, or and enhances cell function. This appears to be limited to a specific set of wavelengths and administering LLT below the dose range does not appear to be effective. Uh, so then they have like some history of it uh, and some of the research that's been done uh, it's been looked at as a possible remedy for stuff with uh, muscular, musculoskeletal issues, mouth issues, hair loss, brain injuries, cancer treatments, um, stem cells. Doesn't look like most of it's been very promising, but I don't even see this study about the Japanese women here, um, which seems kind of strange given how dramatic it apparently was. I don't even see that listed as a possible thing it could treat. I don't even see fertility mentioned on this page. I guess that's the government suppressing the truth. I also don't really know if uh, the light emitted by these lasers is at all akin to the light from the sun. So saying that even if you could, even if you can demonstrate that these like LLLTs, this uh, low level laser therapy even if you could show that this did have a positive effect on um, fertility, that doesn't necessarily mean that sunlight would, right? Uh, vitamin D production. We all know the importance of vitamin D. The more skin, uh, skin you expose to the sun, the more vitamin D you'll produce. I guess that stands to reason. Uh, germicidal UV rays have a have disinfectant germicidal qualities. Sunning in the genitals keeps them pristine. Okay. Uh, continuous light is beneficial for every cell in your body. Sunlight is extremely beneficial for every cell in your body, not just because of UV rays and colors, but because of the continuous bright light. In a stu this study, bright light increased sperm production. Our current time is characterized by low sexual energy, fertility, and vitality. Sunning genitals and butthole chugging. Butthole chugging is the cure. Is this guy a troll? 
effect of continuous light on spermatogenesis and testicular stereogenesis in rats. Uh, steroid, steroido, steroido, steroido genesis in rats. Possible involvement of alpha U uh, uh, globulin. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so I don't know. The one that uh, I have the most questions about would be this, because this is the only one that actually directly correlates with something he said. Like this, I guess does in rats or something but like the only one only study that actually purports to show something that this does is this one and he doesn't tell you what it is i'm also not sure what butthole chugging is but i'll look into it it sounds fun it sounds like an activity i might get into <laughs> don't care if it's a troll he's funny as hell dude i told you this guy is fucking great this is this guy is fucking gold, and he's got his stupid bullshit you can buy on his site. Look at all this. Oh my god, yeah, dude, he has a brand. He has his own fucking brand. Grass-fed steak crisps, dude. Oh fuck yeah. What if you could enjoy mouth-watering grass-fed uh, grass-fed steak anytime, anywhere? Oh my god, yeah. With zero cooking or cleanup, wash your hands after you're done sunning your genitals. That's all I ask. I don't want your fucking, you know, keep put your genitals away before you fucking make the steak. That's all I ask of you. So, yeah, crunchy, razor-thin crisps of grass-fed beef. Unlike traditional beef jerky, this has no additives and has the satisfying crunch you're missing on the carnivore diet. Oh, my God, yes. Finally. Finally. A meat-based potato chip. Yum. <laughs> Those steaks suck. What the fuck is a steak crisp? It's this. He also has uh, some other shit. Beef liver. The first and only beef liver that actually tastes good. Mmm. All, all it is. Sea salt, no spices. Crunch, no seasoning. Beef liver, no additives. Very basic. All it is is beef liver and salt. Finally. Finally. <laughs> the product for me, man. Mmm. Oh, yeah. These Real customers, dude. Freaking good. These are freaking good. They are delicious. Get delicious. Them. Carnivore Aurelia. That's his mom. Just sent me grass fed liver crisps. These are chips made from beef liver. Look at those ingredients. Beef liver, water, sea salt. Perfect. I can't look at those ingredients because there's a giant thing in the way. What the fuck? I can't see it. Perfect. Crunchy, no seasoning. You're like, what Thank is- Thank you so much. Okay. Very okay. nice and crispy. Smell like liver. Smell like liver? Oh God, no. Dude, did you- Dude, what? Hold up. <laughs> oh, man. Hmm. Hmm. It's pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. This reminds me of when fucking they had Alex Jones eat that nasty shit. And then he's like, oh, it's like, it's like Ovaltine. And it was clearly, it was clearly not like Ovaltine. He's just like, he's like, takes a sip. He's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's just, oh, that's, that's rich like chocolatey Ovaltine. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, but, you know, pork rinds are like meat chips, but, you know, they are they got too many additives and stuff and all them seasonings. That's bad for you, bro. You don't want all that seasoning and shit in your body. You want pure meat. Only meat. Anything you eat that's not meat, you're a communist. That's how this shit works. It sounded horrible. It just sounded like he just took a bite into like some fucking dried out, disgusting meat that you would like. Maybe like provisions on a fucking ship sailing to the new world that, you know, <laughs> people are like, yeah, these are, um... <laughs> that's not a good thing, bro. You want fucking desiccated dried liver? 
covered in fucking salt and nothing else. Like, give me a break. Not, not a treat for me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to pass on that. I don't know. I kind of want one. I kind of want to see for myself. You know. I love this dude. He's just a scammer with carnivore gimmicks. I know it's great. And he's like telling people. He's like he's literally trying to convince people to like eat these like eat dried out liver and just stand outside and like lay outside in their yard with their fucking balls to the sun. Like, and he's like, yeah, that'll cure what ails you. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, no. But you know what? It's kind of great. God bless this country. God bless America. Well, my alarm went off, which uh, signals that it's time for me to go get ready to go to the gym. Thank you guys for joining me. Appreciate y'all. Um, I guess maybe we can take like five minutes to talk to the chat, I guess, because uh, I don't have to leave for 15 minutes. And I, I don't think I need more than 10 to get ready. So we could probably stretch the, the timeline a little bit here. Get to the gym, you disgusting. I will. It's all in good time, motherfucker. I'll be there in a minute. <sighs> Do a tasting with TJ. Oh, yeah, that might be cool. Uh-huh. Wait, is this the sun balls guy? Yeah. It's the sun your balls guy. We never left. We're all we're still on him. What parts of the body we're gonna say? I do uh three full bodies a week. I don't do like a push pull split or like a a body part split. I just do like a, a general like full body. I might do a split later on. But for now, I'm just like, uh, I'm just trying to do like a full body workout three days a week. Uh, I missed one uh, last week and I kept trying to make it up, but um, I didn't realize that uh, the shit was going to close early on uh, Friday. Move Orn to the gym. I'm going to. Jesus Christ. Settle down. Hi, TTJ. Aren't people just always trying to create a fad to get rich? Sure. Some people succeed at it. TJ, don't use the word taint. Say gooch because it's funnier. Uh, this is productive language policing. All right. I will substitute the word gooch every third or fourth time I say taint. But I'm still mostly going to say taint. Yeah, I remember hit that like button. Yell more obscenities. Fuck shit ass bitch cunt motherfucker die! <laughs> Scotty joining you. Scotty lives like six hours from me now. He still lives in Louisiana, but he lives in the very, he lives in the fucking complete opposite end of the state. So we don't do stuff like that together. If he did, I mean, if he lived that close, he'd probably still be in the studio most days. Is the gym busy at this time? I don't know. It depends. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. I usually don't want us to go on Saturday, so it's going to be a different experience. Taint going to say gooch. So the next Charles Manson, I would love to be LSD brainwashed by you. Thank you, yeah. What's better, TJ, feeling healthy and productive or a big stack of double-stuffed Oreos? Yeah, both. If I could just eat Oreos, they need to invent Oreos that make you lose weight. And then, and gain muscle. I guess you could just put anabolic steroids in them. That might work. I think Sargon tans his nuts. I mean, he must. It was the only way to explain his fucking vitality, dude. Are you stressed? I think everybody is. I don't know. If, if I met a person that wasn't stressed, I'd be kind of like sad. I don't know. I'd be sad for them because it means they have no awareness of the world around them. <laughs> Another word for taint is grundle. I don't like it. I don't like it. What is your steroid intake schedule? I'm not on steroids. It'd be a lot easier if I was. I could definitely achieve my results quicker and easier if I was able to do that, <laughs> but I don't do that. Uncle Charlie's Magic Mushroom Psychedelic Fun Park. Hell yeah, bro. Anyway. Uh, it's uh, getting to be time where I got to go get ready. I got to go work out and shit. I'll see you motherfuckers later. Peace.